Bismillahi min shaytani rajim. Bismillahi rahmani rahim. Ati Allah, ati Rasul, ulul amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajis, daifu, miskeen, zalim, jahal. And but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah, this holy month of Rabbi Thani and from the realities of Allah and the dress of Surat al Yaseen, the fourth lunar month by the power of nine and the Sultanate of nine. And we have a urs of a great Sultan, a great Sultan al Awliya that in this Divine the Kingdom, Thy Kingdom come and Allah's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven is a prayer in all religions and a reality that did you think God Almighty left this earth without a king? When Allah describes to Prophet that Allah favours kings. Allah's government is kings, not demonocracy where collectively wealthy people get together and pretend to fool poor people that they're voting and the wealthy people already made a decision. But no king because Allah appoints the king. And if the king and the people, more the people, if the people are righteous, Allah sends for them a righteous king. And if the people are bad, Allah sends them a king that will torment them. Allah doesn't say good over bad people, why? To ruin the good one and destroy him? But what you put into it is what you get out of it. And what Allah gives an ayat al kareem because everyone always saying, where is the Qur'an when you talk? It's all Qur'an but they don't have ears to hear. Means that when Allah is describing, I don't change a condition of a people until they change what's within themselves. So Allah's government is kings. And if a king is good or bad, it's because of the condition of a people. So when they get together… Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. there and say, oh we're being oppressed, we're being oppressed, we're being oppressed. Allah comes to guide them, I'm not going to change your condition. Whatever you think it is of good or bad until you change yourself. But the problem is that we live in a society that left the thought of changing oneself. We'd rather protest for other people what they should dress, what they should wear, but never fixing our own self. There's no protest allowed, turuqs and tariqahs, absolutely not. Amr ibn Maruf, Nahya al Munkar. Yeah, they use this phrase. That if you see bad, go and say something against it. But with bad nafs and bad understanding, go out and talk to other people what they're doing bad. Where in Islam is that allowed? That you could open your mouth and talk about what somebody's doing bad? Judge not for you shall be judged. 
and all the Prophets came to teach, don't make shirk khafi, hidden shirk. That's when you set up a chair next to Allah's and say, this is my mini throne and Allah has the big throne. And in my mini throne I pass judgment to everybody, you're a kafir, you're a believer, you're jahl, you're this, you're this, you're this and begin to judge Allah's creation. And they have no qualifications for judging, they have no even internal understanding of what kind of demon is on a person, what kind of energy is on this person, nothing from Allah Just sit and make comments about people so there is no protesting allowed. Because what if you're out there and you're wrong? If you're an odds person and you take the odds, you're probably playing with fire. When you don't have the whole picture and you sit a life of just judging because we watch YouTubes. This one that, this one this, win and this one down, this one's win, this one's down and all that. But be very careful, judge not for you shall be judged. The way in which you judge Allah's creation that when you take your last breath you'll be held and you'll be brought into a, an area of isolation and say, so we want to judge you now, Allah wants to judge you. Based on what? When the angels are coming and questioning, based on how you judged. The character in which you come is the character in which you'll meet them. And the angels, the criteria for which the angels will be dealing with you, because awliya know. Pious people whom studied under awliyaullah, they are the defenders in the heavenly kingdom. They're lawyers, a wakil, an awliya means they're friends of the Divinely Court, they work within that legal system through their soul. And they say that now you took your last breath, the angel's coming with a criteria in which to judge you. And what will that criteria be? It's in how you conducted yourself on life, that's only fair. How can they come with a mercy when you had no mercy towards people? How can they come to a softness when you had no softness with people? Means how you live your life will be your condition. Everyone's trying to do some garbage thing and expecting some great thing as a result. So take all the garbage in your trash can at home, cook it together and see if you can make a dish out of that. No, you wouldn't eat it, you'd probably get poisoned by it because maybe some really toxic things in the trash can. So in life is the same, how is it that you're going to live with a certain character, you take your last breath and you believe that what will be waiting for you is something good, scientific, very logical, no hocus pocus. Because a lot of the kids want to know, you know, be straight up not give me like hocus pocus things. Right Ibrahim? Yeah, straight up, what you do is what you get, there's no other way about it. What you put into life, you get out of life. You study hard, you're most likely going to have a good career. You sit on your couch and waste your life, <laughs> you most likely won't leave that couch and nothing will come in your direction. So our whole life is cause and effect. And when we think of the heavens, you don't have to believe all the high spiritual realities and think, oh, I'm going to ever achieve those, doesn't matter. But we go back to basics. The basics is that how do you think you're going to be judged? If what we say is true and you take your last breath and your soul is an energy and anybody in school studied energy, you can't destroy energy. Your physical body dies but your energy doesn't get destroyed. You turn off the light bulb, does that mean electricity vanished? No, electricity left the light bulb but it didn't vanish, we didn't destroy it by turning it off. So when we die, somebody turned you off, you didn't vanish. Your physical body ceased, your energy is right there. 
And your energy being is now going to go where all energy goes and no physicality enters. And they know through energy, energy is very intelligent. In its journey it picked up many different residues and understandings of where this energy has been. They found light even more receptive. They found in their duality and the study of duality of light and the movement of light and that's how quantum physics came. Because I heard last night some of the younger kids actually research what I say. And then they came back and asked, it was amazing, just, I, I searched it, you're, 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 you're not making this stuff up? <laughs> you study quantums. So study, how did they come up with their quantum theories? They were studying light. And they were seeing how when light moves and light under observation and then when they made a slit and the light went through a, a, a slit, on the other side came one particle. Then they did more tests and they said, oh this, way, this light actually can go into waveform and appear in multiple points. And they say, well how, how come it's doing that? And they found out it's by who's watching it. If they watched it, it kept and went as a particle. When it wasn't being observed, it went into duality. They took the scientific understanding and they went with their sciences and made their quantum theory. Quantum means the study of light. What they should have thought is that our soul is an energy and a light and it's teaching them, it thinks, it understands, it knows. The soul knows, the soul is intelligent, the soul is immensely intelligent and we opened up that last night. So anyone who follows Qur'an knows what we do, we're reciting tonight at Salatul Isha. Hajj Shahid, will you disc… Uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Alam al-Qur'an, Sa'an, Allamahu al-Bayan, Allamahu al-Bayan. That Allah and Holy Qur'an is teaching these advanced physics for these people that we taught the Qur'an. Taught to who? Not your physicality. Why all, 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 anyone had a physical experience like that where Allah came and taught your physicality? Allah clarifies, Alam al-Qur'an, there's a being in which you're not familiar with which is your soul and Allah has taught it Qur'an. It is the power of your electricity, your energy. Your, your power that is moving is Allah's Divinely Qur'an that makes your soul energized. It's high and it's qayyum, it's eternally powered, high from the oceans of the ever eternal and qayyum, you don't need a battery to recharge it. And there's nothing you can do to deplete it and kill it. You cannot eat, you cannot do good deeds, you can do many things that will slow your energy down but you cannot turn it off until you jump off a roof, God forbid. You just have a, a low energy and a very sad and depressing life. So its power is divine. It's eternal ocean, when it came into existence, no understanding, nobody has any understanding of that world of light. When did it come into existence and when is it going out of existence, far beyond anyone's understanding. So as a result we have this light within us. The reality of this light within us, that this light is intelligent, as a result of this light that what am I going to do when I take my last breath and everybody dies? There is nobody who lives forever. So then death is a definite part of the equation. So it's not a question anymore, it's an exact finite, there's nobody who's lived forever. As a result death being a finite point and light being a reality, then we have to understand that the likelihood of my death and my light coming into its reality is very high and very probable. And as a result 
then I should be very sort of considerate and continuously thinking that the probability of death is 100% and the fact that my light is an energy and energy is not destroyed, there's going to be some sort of an event. And religious people because they experience through their seclusion a phase of death, that they in their seclusions, in their trainings that Allah took their body to a point in which you consider to be death. And they see the reality of their soul, they interact with the reality of their soul, they saw the horizon in which Allah wants to open for them, send them to. As a result they come back operating from their soul to guide people, that be very careful. That's why the khalwa and chilta and the 40 days and all the teachings of all spiritual people is the guide has to experience it. It's not philosophy, he reads a philosophy class. He went into 40 days of, of torment and, te and testing like the azab of the grave. And as soon as he entered into the seclusions, the zikrs and chantings that were given, they saw the torment, they saw the punishment, they saw all the energy that they brought into that seclusion and that energy does not die. So bad deeds in a world of light manifest. So as soon as they sat down all of a sudden, we said before, they start to do their zikr and all this bad energy begins to manifest like rats. And then the character of a rodent, they just a rat, it just has droppings, it's contaminated. Most people are scared of rats. Your own energy comes out and manifests what bad character it represents. And as a result it starts to come towards you now because Allah wants to bring it out. Witness yourself who knows his Lord, will know, who, who knows himself will know his Lord. So Allah wants you to know yourself before you think you can know the heavens. Know what governed you of your character, what governed you of your personality. Before you can ever claim any understanding of the Divinely Presence that's so far away in its understanding and we don't even understand the being that I carry all day long. And they saw these rodents come out from their energy and begin to attack them. And in their training they just sit, they meditate, they ask for madad and help and support and nothing relieves us from this torment and difficulty without the understanding of that madad. Because Allah wants us to understand, ittaqullah wa qunu ma sadiqeen. Have a consciousness and keep the company of sadiqeen. But Allah's commands are not only for physical world but for your eternal journey and your eternal soul. So immediately the training come back in, Allah keep the company of your truthful guides. When you're fighting this fight of yours, you're not in this alone. Don't call on me, you are trained to have guides and you are commanded by Qur'an to keep the company of Sadiqeen. Why are you not bringing their company now and immediately madad? Immediately madad asking to, to be with my shaykh, asking for the presence of the shaykh that bring your light into me, this is way beyond my ability to take this difficulty away. And you feel their madad and their lights coming. And as a result of their lights coming they give a firmness within the heart and soul and begin to push your reality, to push this negativity away. And the negativity trying to conquer the head and say, you're going to be defeated. And shaitan been coming in to whisper into your head, you'll be brought down. And only by the supporting light that Allah give from the eternal world of light, kunu ma sadiqeen, not heavenly, not only physical, but call upon them, their lights are all waiting. As a result a tanzil rahmah, a mercy comes. What's that mercy? Is the Muhammadan light that these awliyaullah are carrying. As a result of the Muhammadan light and the madad of awliyaullah, what Allah now says in Qur'an, how I can punish them when you are amongst them? Ya Muhammad Allah is talking to Prophet 
how I can punish these people when they're making istighfar and that you're light and you're present with them. And all the reality of Qur'an comes to intercede in their seclusions and their trainings. And as soon as they're making their salawats, they're making their madad, the Muhammadan light and the intercession of Prophet comes to the believer and begins to intercede. And what is intercession and energy? Is the energy comes to become present with you. And Allah says, when Muhammadun Rasulullah is present, punishment stops because that Allah is not going to punish that light. So when we lack is the lack of the Muhammadan light within our heart and our being. Means then all of these nasheeds, all of these praisings, all of these salawats, all these trainings in the world of light to bring that light upon our soul, to bring that love, you'll be with whom you love. When you bring that love and it's not in your brain the love but it's in your heart and it becomes a second nature. Nobody has to think about loving their parents unless the parents were rough with them. Then that's something different but you still have to push that through. But the love within the heart, that there is somebody in your life you love and it's in your heart, not your logical concept, do I think I love you or maybe I love maybe I don't love you, that's something different. This love, why Prophet described, you be with whom you love. I mean when you have a love for them, they resonate within your heart, within your wujud, within your soul. So on a day of difficulty and remorse, it's a second nature that I'm being overwhelmed by this difficulty and I need help. And all of Islam is tawassul, all of Islam is tawassul, all of hajj was tawassul, go around the Kaaba, well Allah's not there, touch the black stone is tawassul, what you're going to get from that. Pass the Maqam al-Ibrahim, pray two rakah, go back Safa Marwa, go back in Zamzan, all is tawassul. Is that seek a means to make Allah happy. And the greatest means for the believer is the love of their Prophet and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and the love of those whom carry the love of Sayyidina Muhammad That by just being around them, seeing them, hear them, we feel the ishq and the love and the muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad and this becomes the great gift and the great reality. As a result of this ishq and this love then they remind to us that your light is real and the things that you do you will see that. And if you do the bad you will see the bad and if you do the good you'll see the good. And our life is about doing the good, doing the good, doing the good. We have disagreements of religious dogma and religious rules, the just of it, the reality of it, the energy of it is what? Just do good so you see good. And if you do bad it will never escape you, don't think it escapes. It's just collectively holding there, holding there, holding there until they take their last breath and that negative energy is there and they have to deal with that negative energy. Now look at the condition of humanity now and everybody wants righteousness and piousness and good leaders and good leaders. Hmm? Aren't they watching the same channels that everybody else sees? Don't they watch the same news channels with the crime, the horrible character, the violence? the markings upon their bodies and all of them say, we need good leaders, good leaders. What good leaders? There are people coming now to crush people as a sign of God's judgment upon earth. Why He's sending good people? For who? So it means that what comes now with people whom are zalim and oppressors, oppressive leaders that oppress them and these leaders don't care for the people and they do things to them under the guise of, we're going to help you, I'm going to help you. 
This is the world and this is the reality, this is the guidance of Qur'an, Holy Qur'an is teaching us. We don't change the condition of a people until they change what's within themselves. And Allah prefers the kings because there's one to appoint. And Allah is the controller of hearts. And when Allah sees the creation is doing bad, the creation has bad character, push the heart, punish them and they begin to be oppressors upon the people. They say that they came into the presence of Genghis Khan, a believer. And Genghis Khan looked at him, said, so you believe in God? Say, yes. So what bad things have you done that he brought you in my presence because you know what I'm about to do to you? Right? He's telling him uh, guidance from Allah. That if Allah loved you, He would not be putting you in my presence right now because of what I'm about to torture you with. The person knew he did something wrong. And did this, uh, Allah controls everything. He controls the heart of the good and the, and the heart of the bad. And told that one that, what you did that put you into this presence? So it means that this is a deep reality. And that in times that people are bad, we have to change ourselves. Not comment on the leadership, not protest about this and protest about that. This all started with the concept of protesting. What to protest? Every day you have to protest yourself. That I'm bad, I'm doing something wrong, I'm going to be held accountable, I'm going to be judged. And every day I should have a big protest in my own living room for myself. If you conquered that and you took an account of all the bad things we do every day, what did I do wrong, what did I do wrong, what were the bad things I did, what was the bad things I did, be truthful and honest to yourself, write them down and then write that, what, what did I do good to resolve the bad? If every day you take ten dollars, ten dollars, ten dollars, ten dollars out, at least try to deposit twenty. Otherwise you are, what's the word in Arabic for bankrupt? Muflis. Yeah. You're empty, you have nothing. So when you know and you're doing accounting, what I did bad, bad actions, bad energies, bad talking, bad thinking, all these things. Then say at the end of the night that, what did I do good? Did I try to do some prayers? Did I try to do some meditation? Did I try to do some charity? Did I try to do something helpful? If everything in the account is just negative and leaving, what did we put into the account of any type of positivity? And the one who has a aqal and, and some sort of sense within them says, this is logical, I don't know about all these rules in religion. But I should balance what I'm doing bad and wrong with some good so that I'm not spiritually bankrupt. And eventually if you take a, a daily accounting of that, you'll try to say that, you know, I can do this good very easy and just as easy I can come out and cut some of these bad actions, bad character, bad personality traits. We pray that Allah give us an understanding of our soul, our light and eternal energies and how to purify it and perfect it and how to protect ourselves against the difficulties that coming upon the earth and have always come upon the earth but they're coming now in much more power, much more difficulties. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamu al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته